Hello, beta testers. It should come as no surprise that at the end of month six, Marvel's Avengers still only has two villains, one enemy type, and zero Marvel locations. I could say three villains if the campaign were replayable, but as of today, March 3rd, month seven, it is not. This game's failure to profit with overpriced, ugly skins and the deliberate choice to refuse representation of Marvel's incredible comic book and film legacy is almost as perplexing as its failure to capture the attention of fans so eager for anything Marvel that a Spider-Man movie title could bring them to climax. But capturing new attention isn't the worst of its problems. It can barely retain the attention of those that are invested in it. Still falling through the map? Check. Enemies spawning outside of the map? Check. One archer in six months that didn't even bring a villain to add to the two on offer? Check. Blue loot outstatting exotics, exotics dropping with no perks, when hilariously, the players seeking these exotics are forced to play through a single player only 40 plus floor mode? I'm sorry. For the $60 this game shamelessly charged for Crystal Dynamics to then disgracefully fall silent and remain silent for the game to perform this way after six months? It's not just unacceptable, it seals your fate as the worst of the worst. The contribution of the Avengers combat team cannot be overstated as their exceptional work demonstrates superheroic strength supporting the colossal weight of this wreck. But a looter with bad loot, a live service with no service, it only ices the cake of an ugly, overpriced, endgame lacking, one enemy type boasting disgrace of a Marvel property with a campaign you can't replay and we're in month seven. Beta testers, did you know? A demo has the ability to toggle auto loot pickup on and off. You can even specify what tier loot is to be picked up, so the trash can stay on the ground for you to walk over and disassemble or scrap it. A demo has the chance for high tier loot that will drop from enemies, chests, bosses, not just lengthy activities that you're meant to do solo, and this loot drops with random mods that offer real gameplay variety, whether it's life leeching bullets, rounds that make enemies explode and do damage to people around them, or even an extra ability charge so that you can use your abilities twice as often. A demo, defenders and gentlemen, has bosses that, as spongy as they admittedly are, have unique and interesting attacks to keep fights varied, singularities that'll suck you in and teleport you if you reach its center, fire tornadoes that will travel around the map and flush you into danger, attacks that mark the battlefield like trip mines, restricting movement and altering the flow of combat. These bosses have attacks that are preceded with a bar above their head that visibly indicates to you their cast time or the wind up that the game encourages you to interrupt. Ugh. Plenty of games outpace Avengers, but to think, a demo displays better boss design than Avengers quick time event trash does? Degeneracy unleashed. Because Crystal Dynamics' vision of a Marvel boss encounter involves you wailing on one of their two villains until they're dead? Month 7 and you've added zero new villains because they're so complex in their mechanics and their phases, right? Even with the unrealistic expectations and RNG associated with loot and Avengers, tryhards have found ways to make builds to damn near insta-kill these bosses. And you know Crystal's solution to try to make the game challenging is just to raise the power level if or when the new content drops. But once again, baby, listen to these things a demo has that a seven month old game does not. Join in progress, replay campaign, 
The shop already boasts hourly rotations on gear when Avengers has so little gear that even when its shop rotation wasn't broken, it had nothing to offer. Outriders gear can drop with random mods on it that you can gain by dismantling these items to then put these mods onto other pieces of gear via a crafting feature. This is what commitment to a genre sounds and looks like. These classes get 8 abilities total and you can choose 3 as your dominant ability. That means somebody can be playing your same class and be using 3 completely different abilities from you. If only Avengers worked like that, baby. Oh, we could have different Iron Men with different abilities. Did I mention Outriders free emotes that you unlock as you play through the game? There's an emote wheel as well because the game didn't come out 10 years ago. Let me talk about the best, the honest and true best part is that it's crossplay. It's future proofed itself by guarding against abysmally low player counts by making it so everyone can play with each other. I'm on PC, you're on Xbox, somebody else is on PS4, we can all play together. And here come the defenders of my comment section. If you don't like it, then don't play it. Bitch, we haven't been playing Avengers for months. We've been watching with a slither of hope that this game might get its shit together. Add some villains, get to Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch. Oh my God, Scarlet Witch, so hot right now. If it's not what you're looking for, then why spend time talking about it? Because I'm the only one being real. Since content creators are throating this game so hard that we can't tell if your tears are because this game sucks or because you're sucking and hitting that gag reflex. And yes, a live service with broken daily seven months after launch sucks. No matter how hard you want to dodge these facts like Neo, we're watching you from outside the matrix and we all think you're an ass. I feel hope that this game may get better, but my feelings do not erase that Crystal Dynamics has removed features that they do not intend to put back in for over a month. Features that have broken the ability for people to even get trophies and achievements. They have broken previously functional perks on gear, have deliberately increased the grind without increasing the rewards, and the cherry on top is their plan to implement a custom harm room, a highly requested mode from players that even I was making apparent as far back as October 2020. And what did they do? Well, based on the footage, you can't change the environments. You can't even set modifiers. What are the only two things you see under this picture, bitch? All these corny, creatively bankrupt hacks do is retweet photo mode posts to trick people into thinking that the game works. And all they had to do was dress up one room for a holographic fucking danger room equivalent? And you couldn't do that? That wouldn't enhance the photo mode extravaganza that is your game? You should be able to spawn villains in here. You should be able to fight AI-controlled heroes in here. Players should be able to choose the same character and have a team of players on Iron Man, on Captain America, if they so chose. There should be time trials and flight activities. This game is set not just in a Marvel Universe, but in a Marvel Multiverse, and you've made it boring. This holographic room could be the staging ground for things that we haven't seen yet that the computer could just pull from anywhere. You know, instead, look at you. You've made us all coroners. And every week we seem to uncover something that makes this autopsy even more strange. When will it end, Crystal Dynamics? The fun the action-packed, shared experiences, the synergizing that many of us expected to be possible in this game is nowhere to be found, and it's not coming soon. In Genshin, abilities come together to freeze, shatter, 
melt and vaporize opponents in powerful reactions. Avengers could have done the same and allowed us to relive our favorite moments and hero combinations the way that even the movies pay tribute to. But Crystal Dynamics doesn't get it. As much as they try to convince you, comic books mean so much to us, is that why you're making such garbage adaptations of all the skins that we would just prefer you not mess with? Go watch Tony fight Cap and Bucky. Go watch T'Challa punch through the force field into Wakanda. Go watch Wanda Maximoff peer into the Mind Stone and glimpse the Scarlet Witch. Maybe the moments that speak to you are from the comics. For me, it's Silver Surfer Requiem. If Marvel has ever made you feel something, like really feel something, if you haven't already, realize now that this isn't Marvel. <laughs> and worse, it potentially never will be.